Hi guys, welcome back to CNG Productions. My name is Tom and I'm back with another painting video on the Citadel Contrast Paint range. And today we're going to be looking at the quite popular brown colored neutral tones because they're supposed to be like the MVP paints of this set. And I'm basically just testing them out on the two different base coats as I did with the flesh tones in the previous video. So the model with the bow has been undercoated using the Wraith Bone and the model with the spear is using the grey sear. And you can see I'm starting off with my Army Painter character paintbrush here with the Gore Grunter fur, which is like a reddy chestnutty brown, which I think would be really good for like, you know, bear pelts and things like that. As you can see here on the Wraith Bone, it goes on very smoothly. I think, to be honest, if you're applying it as thick as I am, it goes on very similarly on both base coats. But I think throughout this video, you'll see the Wraith Bone, given that warmer tone, is getting the stronger colour out of the two models. But I think it's really, really nice tone to go with. Going on smoothly as it did before with the flesh, sinking into those recesses. And just the speed with these paints is ridiculous. The fact that you can kind of get this done very rapidly. My pet hate is blocking in colours before I can put an ink on. This does it in both and it's fantastic. So onto the Agarus Dunes now, this is kind of like a uh, an off brown bone, kind of like not your bleach bone, more like your stained bone colour. And I'm using it on the robes here. Now the Godsworn Hunt that I'm using for this video, by no means should they be painted this way. They're just two models that I can put a lot of brown colours on to show you the different types. So it's by no means a painting tutorial for them. But again, as you can see, real kind of goldeny brown here. I think you could probably use Agarosh Dunes for maybe a non-metallic gold in places. I think you could definitely get away with that. And it's um, a really, really nice colour that you could potentially use if you've got a skeleton army uh, or undead and you... You kind of want to get that variance in colours between them with the other bone colour that I will be demonstrating in a second. So we're looking at kind of furs and leathers, as we said, with these paint ranges. And you can see they're going on really, really smoothly here. Now, the snake bite leather that you'll be able to see here is probably one of the best sellers that's going to come out of this range. It's your ubiquitous MVP leathery brownie colour. And I think I can definitely see why it's being praised so much. It is kind of your mid-tone, your mid-range brown. In the depths and the recesses, if you're putting it on thickly like I am, you do get a real strong tone, so it'll be useful for defining things like leather straps that go across flesh, you know, if you put the kind of contrast paint in along the edges there to divine that kind of dark line between where the strap meets the body. And as you can see, you get a real good golden brown tone as it goes on the wraith bone, but as I apply it here on the grey sear, because there's such strong pigment in this, I think you probably would want to consider using the contrast to get a lighter tone. I mean, I'm just putting it on straight from the pot, as you can see. But the contrast paint that comes with it, the contrast medium, sorry, that comes with it, you can use to kind of make that pigment stretch a little bit further and get variants out of it. And I think snake bite leather being a mid-tone can probably go quite a long way. So as I'm popping through my paint pots here, you can see I'm now onto black templar, which is going to be used for kind of the black leather. Now, I actually thought the black templar would struggle going over these because of the translucency of these contrast paints. I thought it wouldn't look particularly great. And actually, if anything, when it dries, it's a little bit of a grey tone. But it is fantastic for a worn leather look. If you imagine kind of the medieval-style worn boots or anything along those lines, as this dries, and you'll certainly see it at the end of the video as well with the finalised products, it does leave this kind of like opacity, but with a little bit of greyness, as you can see there on the top of the boots, coming through and on the leather strap. So actually, it's a really, really good colour. I probably wouldn't paint power armor with Black Templar. I don't think you're going to be doing your, your death watch with it. Or maybe you could with a couple of coats. But I think for leather in particular, leather straps, which are always pain and fiddly to do, this is really nice and it allows a little bit of that undercoat to come through. Now, if you watch yesterday's video, you can see I have done a little bit of tidying up with the original base colors. And I'm going to go after this video and do it again. Um, and that's a fantastic thing with this contrast paint range. You can just use the base paints touch up the areas you've gone over the wrong areas and kind of come back to it. Anyway, we're onto a wild wood now. Now this is going to be great for those Sylvan F players. This is a deep wooden brown and by deep I mean it's kind of like a um, fallen kind of branches in the wintry kind of this. It looks darker than it is in the pot there but as you see it kind of dry here on the bow. It looks very, very deep, and by all means it is deep, but as it dries on those base coats and it allows that kind of base colour to come through the translucency of the paint, it is a fair bit lighter, and I think there's definitely good opportunities with the browns to dry brush on top of them and really get a very good standard straight away. Like, this is just the contrast paints, and I'm looking at this and kind of thinking... You know, a little bit of a dry brush with a lighter colour, maybe a Bane Blade brown or even one of the, you know, your Shabdi kind of like stone colours. You could get some really, really nice finishes with this. Anyway, we're on to Skeleton Horde, which I think is probably going to be one of the other MVP kind of brown paints of this set. Obviously, it's for bone. 
obviously it's for those who've got good undead armies, but it is really, really nice. I think I do prefer it over the dunes. It has a much lighter tone. Whether it goes on the Wraithbone or the Grey Seer is very light. I would say that as you look at the finalised ones, there's not much skeleton on the Grey Seer one with the spear, but this one here with the Wraithbone, I would say that the bone colour here goes on far nicer with that warmer undercoat tone. So that's definitely something you might want to keep in mind. You know, I think I concluded yesterday that the Grey Seer was the best for the flesh, but I think the Wraithbone is definitely the best for the brown, so you might want to make sure you've invested in the base paint so you can kind of do the areas of majority in the spray of the one color and then the other areas you can you know paint on the base coats with it so we are on to uh sigor or sigor brown which is gonna be the last bit for this guy's hair this is a very very dark brown it's a deeper brown than the wild wood and it has a lot of darkness like it, as it sinks into the recesses it is almost kind of black it's probably my least favorite out of them but i think you could definitely get some really good use out of it and i think just for this i'm just trying to get like i said as many brown paints as you can so I let the paints dry and you can see them here. You can see what I mean about that uh, black Templar and the snake bite to the brown on the wrist guards there. Really beautiful colours and the bone on his shoulder and where he's standing. I think those three paints are definitely the best. I think those of you who have got beast kind of armies, the Gorgrunt of Fur is going to be very, very useful for getting a quick effect and then dry brushing over the top. But as you can see with the grey seer here, there isn't really much difference. I think the real difference will be um, how you kind of use the medium to thin it out. If anyone's liking her purple hair as I decided to have a go, that's the new uh, Magos or Magos purple, which I just wanted to try it out because her hair was unpainted and I wanted to see how it looked. But I think you could even use the Black Templar and maybe dry brush a bit of silver over for your metallic areas. It might even be a good base coat for that. But as again, you can see that it's had a real impact there. So as that brings us to another video finished, I'd like to say another massive thank you for Brickcraft in Southport for providing us with these paints. If you go check them out on Facebook, look at the description or the pinned comment below, you have a chance to win either No No Fear or Tempest of Souls by liking their page and commenting, so definitely go check that out. If there's any other contrast paints you want me to have a look at, please do pop a comment in the comment section and we'll get to it. And if not, have a fantastic day guys, take care. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching our content, it means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.